Oh, you're you that. that. Guess who's finally filming a plant tour? This is one of my most requested videos. <laughs> Probably the only requested video. If you guys knew how many times I've tried to film this, a plant tour video. Oh, welcome. What? I'm just gonna go through all the plants that I have and give their name. Before you start buying plants, you need to know what lighting your apartment has and then what plants will thrive in that lighting. So I have south west facing light. So all the plants in this area are thriving because of the light. It's really nothing else that I do. I don't fertilize them. I water them. Like I just do the finger in the soil. And if the soil is dry, then I will water. If not, then I won't. In the winter, all the plants go dormant. So it's starting to get springtime. I'm going to start upping the water. So I'm sitting beside this fig bush, not to be confused with a fig tree. This is a bush. It doesn't really matter, but some people don't really know the difference. These two, <laughs> don't look at this yet, uh, were the first plants I ever bought. And I bought these off Kijiji, which is like a, it's not like eBay, but it's like Facebook Marketplace basically. And this was probably three or four years ago. And I got this fig bush, which was probably like this big at the time, and this giant cactus. Oh my God, it started again. Okay, so let me tell the story. This is known as the cactus that tried to kill me. And, <laughs> I'm gonna insert photos if I have it of what this used to look like. It was like very, very, very tall and it's a cactus so it's prickly. And this guy was a little bit smaller. Sorry, let me flip it around so you can see the full beauty of it. Anyway, so I'm walking into my apartment. I have one on each hip, like I'm carrying newborn twins. I go to unlock my door. This slips somehow and I grab it with my arm. Probably wasn't the best idea at the time, but in the moment, a mom's gonna do what a mom's gonna do to save her kid. Obviously, pricked myself with, like I, you know what I mean? Jabbed the cactus into my arm and body. And this begins the event. So I'm like taking them out of my skin and I notice that one of them stabbed into this artery. Is that an artery? I don't know, this vein. The pick was in my skin, so the blood, I was like in, I'm not gonna say internal bleeding because it's not like it was that bad, but my entire arm like here was purple and black from like the blood that was loose in my skin but can't leave my skin. Anyways, long story short, I called, as I do in any situation, my friends who are nurses, I called Jess and they're, my friends are just so used to me being like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. So she was like, it's fine. She's like, put polysporin on it and go to bed. We'll be fine in the morning, whatever. She was right. But I didn't put polysporin on it because I heard you're fine and I'm like, okay, thank God. And I just forgot about it. So I went to bed, I still had the pick in my thing and it hurt and I'm at work and I'm typing on a computer. This is when I had a desk job. I'm like, oh, my wrist is really sore. I flip it over, it's infected. Like pussy, red, inflamed, infected. Now, as someone with anxiety, this is about the worst thing that could ever happen to me. So I'm immediately thinking this artery goes to my heart and it's infected. And God knows where I got this thing from. Like who knows what's on the cactus. A very long story short, went to, Went to the emergency room. <laughs> Sorry, this is a longer story than I thought. I'm gonna put time frames if you guys wanna skip this story. I go home that day, I'm like talking to all my coworkers, like I feel like it's fine, just put polysporin on it like I should have done the night before. Go home, put polysporin on it, put a band-aid on it. Now that I'm alone, my anxiety is next level. Like I can't even think of anything. So I call telehealth. Now, if you're in Canada, you know telehealth is a 1-800 number that you can call 24 hours a day and it connects you with a nurse that you can ask questions to and I, <laughs> I had this number on speed dial. I called this woman, I told her what happened and she was not, she was like, you need to go to the emergency room now. So I blocked out with anxiety and somehow I got to the emergency room and triage nurse is like, what's going on, whatever. And I show him, I like lift the band-aid and show him a pin. Like, do you know how small this is? And because I put the polysporin on, it was completely fine. But he took my heart rate and my heart rate was over like 250 or something crazy that he's like, we need to keep you in here just to monitor your heart rate because my anxiety was sending everything off the roof. My cortisol levels were fucked. I felt like I was gonna throw up all the time. So I'm sitting in the emergency room. I was there for, you guys, I was there for six hours. I went at maybe 11 a.m. and I came home at four and I had to go to work the next morning. But that's just what I get for, you know what I mean? And the people at the emergency, like I, there's literally people 
with knives in them besides me in beside me in the emergency room wig room. There was there was a guy with like his fucking bone out. It was crazy, and I'm standing there with like a band-aid because obviously you're just analyzing everyone else when you're in the waiting room, right? Also, to Americans, yeah, this is Canadian healthcare. Like people have bones out in the waiting room because we have free healthcare. Healthcare. There was pros and cons to everything. There was like a homeless guy in there, and he chugged a bottle of pills from the nurses' station, and then was, like was threatening me and the guy sitting beside me that he was gonna kill us. It was like a whole, th and I'm sitting there like. Do I really need to be here? Anyways, I waited it out because I knew I was gonna go home and get even more anxious that I didn't stay. And the people, the nurse, pretty sure it was a nurse and a doctor that helped me were the most kind people ever. I was so apologetic. I'm like, I feel like I'm wasting your time, blah, blah. They did a, like a mini ultrasound on my wrist. Like they were so nice to me. And they basically were like, yeah, the pick um, is still in your skin, but it's way too much of a intensive surgery to like get it out and my body will extract it itself. They're like, you don't, like it'll be fine. Keep putting polysporin on it, blah, blah. Anyways, this is a very infamous story in my friend group. We all know about the cactus that tried to kill me. So in return, it killed itself. Uh, yeah. I've had many challenges with this guy. Let me put a few clips here actually. Of surgery. This is a good like two years of growth I just cut off. Still rotting. Uh, am I happy about this? No. Am I gonna act quick and cut the top off and then cover it with cinnamon? Yeah. Ooh. Cinnamon challenge! I don't wanna do this anymore. But the most amazing thing is I didn't give up on it. I cut the top off like I was supposed to and I kept it in its plant or whatever and I just put it to the side where I didn't notice it and it started and it's doing it again. It started growing little new cacti. So I would cut them off and propagate, like I'm a surgeon now at this point. And you guys look, this is the biggest one. This was one of these little tiny, and then it turned in, these are two of them. One's obviously a lot bigger. Isn't that so exciting? So now I have cacti all over those. Here's some other propagations. These ones are dying. <laughs> yeah. Um, you may notice if you can see that close, there's white specks on it. They're not bugs, guys. I did a paint splatter art piece. I don't want to talk about it. There's white splatter all over this area in my apartment. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Anyways, this guy's good. I have him um, just to give you guys some hope. I went away for the holidays one year and it lost every single one of its leaves. Every single one was on the floor and dead when I got back. It was just these two sticks. You can't really see them. It was just these two sticks sticking out. Didn't give up on it. I just kept watering it like usual. And I mean, yeah, this might have taken three years to get back to its uh, glory, but we're back here now. So he's doing really well. Love him. He sits here in the south right beside this guy. And this is the Facebook Marketplace find again. It might, you, might, you guys might be like, oh, it's a cactus. It's not. And I try to... Uh, lie to myself and say that it is because like it's a cactus right come on this is a freaking cactus can i move you closer this is a cactus it's not this is actually a succulent which i feel like isn't on all, 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 all cacti i don't know it, oh actually i wrote i wrote all the names of these guys down in, in case i forget this is a oh cactus um, this guy doesn't grow a lot, but you can see there's some green coming in because it's spring, it's getting a lot of sun. I don't water this for six months in the winter time. I don't water any of my cacti for months because they just don't need it. In Canada, we do not get a lot of sun, um, so you're just gonna give it root rod. So that's this, this, these little two. This guy is my favorite plant that I have. This is a Polia peperomides, I believe it's pronounced. It is the light of my life, and it makes me so happy. I mean, just look at it. Are you kidding? I got this one when it was just a little baby. And as you can see, I'll have close-ups in. It grows so many new babies that I have them literally all around my apartment. These are just some examples. I always propagate plants because when I was out of a job a few years ago and I needed money, I needed to literally pay my bills, I started selling plants on Facebook Marketplace. And this was like a few, like now it's a huge thing to do, but at the time there was not any, it wasn't like that big of a thing yet. It was a really good business. I would take the plants, I would grow them in my window because I get really good light here. I would put them in like cute little cheap Ikea pots like this. Like this is probably $2, maybe $1.99. And I'd sell it for like four times the price. And I had an ethical issue with it like I was going to therapy at the time and I was asking my therapist I'm like is this wrong like I feel bad because I sold a fig tree that I got for $40 for a hundred for 180 and 
Sure, I grew it and I changed the pot and I delivered it to her, but she was such a sweet girl and I'm like, oh my God, I want, to. anyways, my therapist is like, it's what for, she's like, you're an entrepreneur. So if you ever want to make money, Facebook is the time, is the place. And this guy down here is an aloe vera plant, of course, and this was my only uh, panic buy at the grocery store in COVID. I, you guys know when you went to the grocery store and there was literally nothing in the shelves, or this happened to me at least, like there was not one thing not even a crumb the size for a mouse. I forget that line, but you guys know. I saw this tiny little aloe vera plant and in my head, I thought I was gonna have to like make my own hand sanitizer, so I bought it and it's grown so big now. This has helped me with a few sunburns, so love her. And this is a, this, um, it's from Umbra. I don't think it's Canadian only, but I don't know, Umbra. So like I said, this is the quarantine corner. This is where they get the best light. So any plant that I'm kind of nervous about, I'll put here. Um, the other thing with Palias is I turn them 180 degrees all the time. I don't really keep track, but you can tell, like, for instance, this guy, you can see which way this he was facing the sun that way. So now I'll face the sun this way. And that's how you get it to grow in a nice circular way, like this guy. I have this. I just feel like it's not for me. You know those plants that you have to water every, like, four hours? We just, obviously, we're not going to get along. There's a lot of plants that I don't like. I really don't like any plants that are kind of spiky other than cacti. Like I don't like snake plants. I just don't like things that look like they have like fingers. I don't know. Oh my God, alocasia, those like really scary ones. I'm not a fan. Anyways, so if you bring a plant home and it doesn't bring you joy, marry Kwando that bit. The last two window ones, this is the cactus that I was showing you before. This guy is a polka dot begonia and I bought this from a uh, Facebook marketplace. It was just a cutting. So it's really happy there. Oh, the last one. I can't believe I haven't showed you this yet. This is my candelabra cactus. It's kind of hard to show. This is my candelabra cactus. <laughs> Can you see it? It's so cute. When I became obsessed with cacti, because I was, and my friends know that, um, I really wanted, like, you know the Arizona cactus that have the things? Those aren't growing in fucking Canada. Like, I understand it now. But at the time, I really wanted one. I found this on Facebook Marketplace again for, like, $10. It was really small when I got it. And it grew, it grew all these arms while I've had it for the past, I think I got it a year and a half ago. I like cacti because you don't really have to worry about them. This guy here is my fig tree. Like I said, the one over there is a bush. This is a tree you can see because it literally has a stem. So no, a trunk. What are these called? These are all new leaves. It's grown so much. This actually is the only plant that I've ever bought from like an actual plant store. I'm not gonna lie, like you don't need to go and be buying I think that was $160. You don't, you can find a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace or just go to like a Home Depot, Lowe's, lots of places are selling plants. Now you do not need to go to those, like a lot of plant stores are just really expensive for no reason. So this guy over here, oh my God, where's my piece of paper? Gold dust plant. I saw this at Home Depot a while ago and it just made me happy. So I got him. He's doing well, he's growing. Kind of confused of how it grows, but it's growing. Like there's new growth right here. So you just see, I just pricked myself again. Look at that. Can you see that in my finger? That is from my cactus. Ow, dude. This is a ficus, I think. I don't know, I just thought it was cute. Here we have a pothos. I'm pretty sure this is a pothos. I swore it wasn't, but apparently it is. And this is a propagation from pothos. If Also, if you don't, guys don't have any plants and you want to start, if you want to be a you, plant mom, highly recommend getting yourself a pothos. They are the most resilient plants. They will not die. And if they do, blame it on the soil. I don't know. They grow really fast. It's really satisfying because they grow really fast. And then this guy in the back over here is another polka dot begonia. This is the full plant. The other one was just a cutting. That cutting was $15 and this plant was $17. And then behind here I have another pothos. This is a really, well not really long because I keep cutting it, but this guy's doing really well too. This is a, these are golden pothos. Well, this one is for sure. I don't, I feel like this is not a pothos, but like let's compare the leaves size, leaves. Like, come on, these are the same leaf, no? Yeah, I feel like it's from the same plant. There's lots of apps you can use to uh, identify. I just, to be completely honest with you guys, I don't really care 
Okay, up here we have a satin, satin silver pothos. So it's the same family, but it's just a little bit more fancy. I have it in a little teacup because I've run out of planters. Zigzag cactus, looks like this. <laughs> or no, not zigzag, sorry, fish tail, or fish bone, fish. Daylight. This guy, oh, as I look into it, I realize it's dying. It's a succulent of some kind. It's a little succulent. <laughs> sorry, I'm not more helpful. This is another pothos cutting. I propagate my cuttings in water, so that's what this is right here. It's pretty sure it's from the same plant as all of these, but I can't really remember. This is a Monstera, obviously. I feel like Monsteras are probably the most popular plant at the moment. I have this propagated in water, and yeah. It's been like this for about a year, and it's grown two new leaves, so. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't put it in soil, but I'm also just like too lazy and I like the way it looks in this jar So we're just gonna let it live. This is the uh, whole cactus of the zigzag But I sh or the fishtail fish bone fish fish red bone Daylight. I just kind of let it flop over I have a few cuttings of these in different places that you'll see. This is really cute. I love I love it This is another golden pothos from the same cutting. We're about to see the mother plant, which is right there <laughs> Ew, I hated me doing that and this is again another so, um golden pothos. This is in the water here. This is a philodendron burl marks, I think. I don't even want to check the page. I got this from Facebook Marketplace and there is so much new growth all over it. Can you see? These are all growing right here. And I just think it's cute. I like the, I don't know, I like the vibe. I like the vibe. I don't really want to show you guys this, but this is my succulent bowl and it's where succulents go to die, unfortunately, as you can see. This corner, this is the last area in my living room with plants. Variegated cutting from Apothos. It, I didn't buy a variegated plant, it just started variegating itself, so I cut it off and in the hopes that it would all be variegated, and it's not, which is fine. This used to be a cactus, <laughs> RIP. And then this is the mother uh, Apothos. The amount of times that I've cut this baby is next level. But yeah, this is the big Apothos guy. It's doing real good here. Can you guys believe also I put the shelf up by myself with like a drill and a hammer? Yeah, no, no big deal. So you guys might recognize these from my background. This Palia is a cutting from my big one and it's grown, it was like this big when I cut it off, when I propagated it, so it's grown a lot. This room doesn't get as good lighting, so that's why the um, dollars, what would you call these? Yeah, the little like lily pads are curled in because it's not getting as much lighting, but I'm just trying to make it adapt because I have too many at Palias in that other room. So I'm hoping it's gonna be okay and it's fine. This is one of my prized possessions. Can you guys see my the back that I tucked this in? If you can, mind your business. This is one of my prized possessions. It's called a mini Monstera, also known as a Tetra, Rafa Tetra something. I'll put the name and you don't need to know it. It's just called a mini Monstera. I got this on Facebook Marketplace. I actually saw this on Facebook Marketplace and posted on my close friends being like, this is so nice, but who would ever spend that much money on a plant? I think she was selling it for like $50 and it was much, much smaller. And 10 minutes later, I like posted another one of me in the car. And the I have a problem. Out. So sometimes, sometimes you just gotta give in because look at her. Look at her, even the new leaf. Like this leaf was furled, furled up two days ago and look at it now. I have it, um, what's it called? Staked with this little thing. I need to get one taller though because it's growing taller. I really want it to go like all the way up my wall. The other guy I have in here is my Monstera and this is a big ass plant. I rescued this one from a corner store. It was dying in the dark. And I felt bad for it, so I bought it, brought it home. Not gonna lie to you guys, I brought it home probably a year ago. It's done nothing. It's not, it's not done one thing. Oh my god! Oh my god, I did not notice that until now. I'm so happy I just saw that. And then above here I have another, yet another Palia cutting. And as you can see, it's obviously been facing the sun this way, so I'm gonna turn it towards the sun that way. And then this guy is another um, pothos propagation in water. I have a lot of these. The, I also keep these around because if I ever need to give a gift to someone, like if your friend ever has a birthday, I mean, my friends all love plants, so it's easy for me, but if someone ever has a birthday, I'll just give them a pr propagation because how many of these do you really need, you know? Oh, and one last one. This one's kind of sad, but if you guys remember, I went away for 
Christmas for four weeks and a lot of my plants were okay. One of my friends came and watered them for me, but this guy did not like that I was gone. This is a, a watermelon peperomia. Oh my God. Are those bugs? See all those little dots? I thought they were spider mites, but they're just damaged from the leaves. Yeah, it's doing okay. See the new growth. It didn't even have any leaves standing. So I'm just letting it do its thing. Got that off Facebook Marketplace as well from this like adorable woman. Here we are at my little table. This, I don't know what this is. Um, it's written on my sheet down the street. This is the matching holder, was it planter, to the big one with my polia in it. But I just thought this was so cute. It reminded me of something that you would see on like a street outside. I don't know, does that even make sense? But I thought it was cute. The uh, golden pothos strikes again. You already know the drill. This one's definitely good to propagate. It has tons of roots, but I kind of like how it looks here, so I'm probably just gonna keep it. This is a adorable little Hoya carry. The thing with these is it's a vine plant, so if you're not buying it when it's on the vine, it's not gonna grow a vine. So this is just like the leaf rooted. It's not gonna, you you can't buy something like this and buy, and expect it to grow into a vine because it just won't. And then last but not least, well actually there's two. I have this little cacti. This is like a barrel cactus, I think. And beside it is the big mama. This guy is my birds of paradise. And I got this off Facebook Marketplace as well. I'm obsessed with this plant. I, I bought it for, it's a big plant, like, you know what I mean? I'm 5'10", and this is probably like 5'5", five five, this plant. And it's big and beautiful, and I love it. And I love when the light hits it, and it just looks gorge. Anyways, I'm pretty sure that's it. Let me, let me get comfortable. If you guys have any questions, or if you want to see anything more, let me know. Some really easy beginner plants, pothos. Honestly, monsteras are really easy to take care of. Um, cacti are super easy to take care of. The most difficult ones I have are probably the polia, just because I know it's only really thriving because of the light it gets. Like it gets direct sunlight for hours there and it loves it there. Um, another one that's tricky is fiddle leaf figs sometimes can be weird because they don't like a lot of water. I think the number one thing that people do as when they first get plants is they overwater. Most of the plants that I've killed ever was because I've overwatered them. Um, if the soil's wet, you don't need to water them. It's a plant, it lives in nature. If you give it good soil, water it when it needs water and give it the right sunlight it needs, it'll survive. Always check on Facebook Marketplace for plants. They have the best plants there and normally people are super, I mean the people I've experienced working with, <laughs> working with, are really nice and they're, they'll almost always bargain. That's the other thing, if you're on Facebook Marketplace, bargain. Like, no one ever puts a price up and expects to get that price unless I'm just crazy. Even if you bargain and they say no, then okay, decide if you want to spend that money, you know what I mean? It is what it is. It's just a fun little hobby. It cleans the air, it makes me happy, it gives me something to do, and I love them. And I love them with all my heart. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in my next video.